Jin. <sighs> You're so lucky. Hey, I'll uh, pay it tomorrow. Yeah. How much is it? Let's see, that's 533,162. And 12 cents. Huh. Is that all? Not bad for three years. Fantastic. What? Sunrise. It's really beautiful. <laughs> beautiful? It's 0600. Nothing is beautiful at 0600. Except maybe what's her name? Shit! What did I tell you? Scramble! Scramble, scramble. Scramble for Dolph Alpha Shelter 5. Yes, sir. Six. Yes, sir. We're expecting you, sir. Alpha, check in. Roger. Identified track. Who's up? Fireball and Thunder from the 12th, sir. Golf Alpha, Golf Alpha, this is the commander of Region Operations Center speaking. This is Golf Alpha, go ahead, sir. Golf Alpha, I'm relying on you to use utmost discretion. You will intercept and report back as soon as possible. Uh, roger, sir. Fox Golf Alpha. Altitude 27,000, heading 310, steady on. Golf Alpha, bogey at 29 miles, bearing 270. Okay, here we go. Fox Golf Alpha. Radar contact, 12 miles at my 9 o'clock. Speed, uh, 700 knots. Roger, Golf Alpha. Identify, please. Holy shit. You see what I see? How could I miss it? Fox is Golf Alpha. We have an enemy aircraft, sir. No identification and he's armed. Keep your eyes open and intercept. Nothing more. Roger.
guy's looking for trouble, Alex. I came to the right place. Where'd he go? I've lost him too. Shit! He's coming right at us! Christ! It's on your tail. It's on your tail! Son of a bitch! I'll get him off your back. Well, hurry up, pal, because he's closing. Golf Alpha! I've abandoned my sights. What are your instructions? I want you to force him to land. He's locked on me! All right, listen. When I give the word, you hang a sharp left. Go! Hey, Alex. I'm with you. I'm right behind you. All right, let's take this guy down, huh? I go right, you go left. Okay. Ready. Son of a bitch! like a friggin' rock! We're 45 angels and climbing! They're over the safety limit, sir, and still climbing. Alex, the planes can't take this. Come on, baby, don't let me down. God damn, this son of a gun can fly. Golf Alpha, break off and return to base. Fox, you're breaking up. Say again. Golf Alpha, break off and return to base. Fox, you're broken. Please say again. That's enough, Colonel. There will be no international incidents in my area. Return to base. That's an order. Do you copy? That's affirmative, sir. I heard you that time. Golf Alpha returning to base. Damn it, we almost had him. I hate leaving unfinished business. No, what you hate is following the rules.
Hey, see that mountain over there? Yeah, Phil, I see that mountain. My dad used to take me to the mountains a lot when I was a kid. He used to say that legends are born in the mountains, and that it's the place where the human race comes into contact with something higher. Well, you don't have to tell me about legends. I was born in Colorado. First stage drops off, right? Yeah. What is this? <laughs> right. Drops off. Yeah. Right? Come on. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Sorry to barge in like this. Sandy, how you doing? Hi. What, asleep already? She conked out after the soup. It must have been boring soup. Oh. Hey. <laughs> What's up? That's a new tactic the general wants us to work on. Oh, hmm. you don't waste any time, do you? I hope it's nothing dangerous. No, no. A little fancy, maybe. Not dangerous. Never dangerous. <laughs> fancy? Mm hmm? That's pretty good on paper, though. Yeah. Of course, the real test comes you know where. Here, take a look at this one. All right. Uh, there. Oh. Daddy, you and me were talking. Oh, uh. Right, I'm sorry. Look, we're in the middle of a little family discussion. Hmm. Do you mind? All right, where were we? The first stage drop-off. Oh, first stage, right. Okay, listen, after we get the first stage ready, all we have to do is find a good launch site. Yeah. We're building a rocket. Ah, rocket. Will you come when we launch it? Wouldn't miss it for the world. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> uh, okay, Sandy, come on, it's time. Kiss all right, Daddy. kiddo. Kiss Daddy. Hi, sweetheart. Bye, sweetie. <laughs> all right. I'm all yours. Show me this fancy plan. At this point, the number one aircraft puts its nose down, fires its afterburners. It'll be impossible for the fighter to lock on. However, having come this close, he'll probably opt to pursue. At which point, the number two aircraft does a barrel roll, comes in on the guy's tail. Bingo. What do you think? What do you think? It's risky. It is. Should work, though. Should hell. It'll work. Have you chosen a trial site yet? Yes, we were uh, thinking of going north to the Mongrado. Altitude? 6,000. It's a bit low, isn't it? But acceptable. We'll stay within parameters, sir. Yes, I've heard that before. You have my word, sir. Okay, it's a go. Don't screw up. All right.
That is, kid. The Mangrado. Phil, are you there? No. Sorry. I was thinking about my father. Since we upset the mountains with our jet noise, they're going to think he's right. Nah, they probably just think it's thunder. All right, remember the parameters. Heading 202, speed 600 knots. 202, 600 knots. Roger. Wait until the signal, Phil. Get the hell out of here. You copy. Bill. You copy. Bill. Bill. God damn it. I feel reverse. Reverse. Go get the hell out of there. God. Oh my God. Excuse me, sir. Yes? We still haven't picked up those two F-104s. That's funny. They should be on final approach by now. Call them. Golf Alpha Fox. Golf Alpha Fox. Coming, Golf Alpha. Golf Alpha Fox. Golf Alpha Fox. Do you read me? Keep trying. <laughs> Just past the outer marker. Fox. What, just one? Right. Thanks, Tower. Sir, there's only one aircraft, and it's coming in with its landing gear on. Jesus. Give me a helicopter. I'm going out there.
get your landing gear down. Colonel? He's okay, sir. Alex? Phil. Can you tell me? Phil. Phil, did he make it? What happened up there? Did he make it? Did he make it? Get him out! the wreckage of Philip's plane. They couldn't find any trace of the body. What happened up there? I don't know. We were flying over the Mangrado and there was this explosion of light. Light. What kind of light? I don't know. I was blinded. The last thing I saw was Philip's plane disappearing into it. That's all I remember.
was glad to be flying with you. He said you were born. You were born to fly. All I have is an empty cough. Christina, I don't know what happened up there. But I promise you I'm going to find out. Oh, God, I wish he were here. Please, be more specific, Colonel. I wish I could be, sir. You have no idea what happened? Oh, I've got lots of ideas, sir. Uh, a meteorite burning up in the atmosphere, satellite, maybe an uncharted comet. I've even considered weather balloons. Technically, that's all possible, but highly unlikely. There is one other possibility. Go on. Flying objects, sir, of non-terrestrial origin. Excuse me, gentlemen. Before we venture into the realm of science fiction, I think we must first determine the mechanics of the accident. I concur. Proceed, Colonel. Our examination of the wreckage shows clearly that aircraft number two crashed into the mountain. So he must have gone off course. Can you account for that? No, sir. What was your exact position in respect to the mountain? We were skirting it, sir. Number two was behind you. I assume so. You assume so? He was behind me. To the right or to the left? To the right. He was to the right. Are you sure? Yes, sir. At a certain point, as you've already stated, you made a sharp turn to the right. Rather suddenly, it appears. No, sir. Not suddenly. Did you or did you not turn to the right? I did, but there was nothing sudden or abrupt about it. For the sake of hypothesis, let's say you did turn suddenly. Is it not possible, then, that in order to avoid a collision, your wingman also changed course? And in doing so, lost control of his aircraft and crashed into the mountain? I repeat. I made no such maneuver. Is it possible or not? It's possible. But that's not what happened. How can you be so sure? Didn't you just state that you were dazed by a sudden burst of light? I remember everything very clearly up to that point. So you can't rule out that he might have done it afterwards. On the other hand, we can't rule out the possibility that the wingman crashed because he was dazed by the light as well. Do you really believe, Colonel, that there was a burst of light? Are you insinuating I made this up? Yes, to justify yourself. What happened to your wingman is entirely your responsibility. And you defend yourself by resorting to lies and the wildest of inventions. I believe, sir, that we have no valid grounds on which to base any conclusions. Until the flight and voice recorders have been decoded, I therefore request the postponement until then. In the interim, Lieutenant Colonel Longy is to be grounded. This hearing is adjourned.
I'm sorry, but this tape is out. That young lady asked for it a moment ago. Do you have any idea how long before she's finished? Well, why don't you ask her? Right. Ten thousand reliable reports that confirm the existence of this phenomenon. Sightings have been made by pilots in flight, recorded on the radar screen, and filmed and photographed on the numerous occasions, and these mysterious objects have been reported to have humanoid occupants. Alleged eyewitnesses all agree on their accounts of landings that have been observed. Oh, I'm, I'm which sorry, I, I was just wanting to know when you might be done, you know, with the tape. I'm almost finished. Ah. Who is that guy? Professor J.H. Thomas. He's a UFO researcher and vice president for Contact International. Ah. Are you interested in UFOs? I'm doing a search for an English magazine. In any case, if you want documentation, you should check Quincy Le Poir French and Gordon Grayton. They're scientific treatises, but I'm sure you can handle them. Right. Well, thanks. I'm sorry. What were those names again? Yeah. Better write them down for you. Ah, you uh, forgot one. Yours. Are we talking UFOs or close encounters of the more common variety? Well, that's uh, entirely up to you. Yeah. Call me when you want to know more about UFOs. Oh, thank you. Isabella. Nice. Yeah. There, that ought to do it. Wait, I'll be right back. Philip, good friends. Yes. Could not be good friends with Philip. I can't believe he's dead. In the mountains, when there's an accident, we say somebody is missing until we find the body. That's why I didn't come to the funeral. You know, Philip used to talk about you a lot. He told me how you took him to the mountains. He was determined to become a mountain climber like me. But he became a pilot instead. Well, flying's a lot like climbing a mountain. Oh, no, no, it isn't. Nothing like it. Climbing a mountain, reaching its summit, is something different altogether. The top of a mountain is the end of one road, the beginning of another. The place up at the top is the furthest from the earth and closest to heaven. Where the human race comes into contact with something higher. That's right. And what is that? What is higher? 
I've spent most of my life trying to find out. I still don't know. Did you ever climb the Mongrado? No. Oh. Once, when I was a young man, I led a scientific expedition looking for a prehistoric campsite. Did you ever find it? We found two rock pictures. Oh, you couldn't really tell what they represented. Looked like two moons or suns descending towards Earth. Symbols. Coming, Maybe. <laughs> Stuff is dangerous. Okay. What you got? W-L-Y for that. W-L-Y, huh? Is that a secret code? What's it mean? We love you. It's dangerous. Better stand back. <laughs> Three, two, one. white semicircle around the area when a bright flash lit up the sides of the aircraft. That's exactly what happened to me. Listen to this one. This happened in England. There were two pilots on a night reconnaissance flight and they saw what they described as a very bright star. Yeah. There's been hundreds of cases just like yours. Put everything over here. Nobody wants to talk about them, and when they do, it's usually to deny that they ever happened at all. It's a nice place. Do you think that could happen here? That they'd actually keep it a secret? Did you really expect them to believe you? Yes. Why wouldn't they? If it happened, for Christ's sake. I'm not making any of this up. It happened. My cockpit was flooded with light. It's strange, blinding light. Listen, Alex, you don't have to convince me. I know these things happen. It's them you have to convince. In the end, we have determined that in the case in question, there's no evidence of extraordinary circumstances. After careful assessments of the flight data and voice recorder, this board has come to the conclusion that the accident was the result of an inexplicable pilot error on the part of the wingman. The board therefore finds that no responsibility can be imputed to the mission leader and no reference to the incident shall appear on his record. Colonel, you are hereby restored to flight status. This inquiry is closed.
Bravo, ready to take off. Delta Bravo, cleared for takeoff. Wind, 290, one, two knots. about it, I couldn't believe it. What got into you, Alex? Why did you abort? I'm not sure I'm ready to fly just yet. In fact, I'm not sure about anything anymore. The board found you blameless. What happened? The board. They didn't listen to me. They never heard a word I said. They knew you weren't responsible. Well, who was then? But dismissing this whole thing as pilot error doesn't help me. It doesn't help Philip. And furthermore, it's not the truth. Then tell me, what is the truth? Look, something... Very strange happened up there. The light was unearthly. Bullshit, what do you mean unearthly? Unidentified flying objects, for Christ's sake. UFOs. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. UFOs. Oh, it's, it's weird, isn't it? I used to think it was weird, too. Been a little funny, UFOs. But now I've seen him with my own eyes. It's not so funny anymore. So what do I do? Stick my head in the sand, pretend the whole thing never happened? What do you want to do? I don't know. I, I just... I don't know. You damn well should know. You were trained to perform under pressure, not give way to doubt and uncertainty. You're either in or out. I'll give you two days to think about it. I know it's late. Uh, I've been relieved from duty. Grounded. Well, you'd better come in then. God, I'm so tired. Uh, maybe they're right. I am looking for something that doesn't exist. Maybe I should just forget the whole thing. Go back to flying airplanes like nothing ever happened. And you want me to tell you it's okay? Is that what you want? Because I won't. And I thought you were my friend. I am. I am your friend, Alex. Are you? Maybe it's about time we made this friendship official. We watch the stars shimmer like distant lakes in the blackest depths, and we wonder. Are there living, thinking beings like us somewhere out there? Like me, maybe. Like you, not a chance. Alex, I'm serious. So am I. Alex. Mm. Do you think we're alone? Why? What do you have in mind? In the universe. Ah, yes. That. Them. 
Do you know what a light year is? Yes, it's uh, 365 days without ice cream. No, it's the distance light travels in a year. I knew that. Well, did you know that if you traveled... Me? Alone? No, I'm sorry. We. If we traveled 50,000 light years, we would have just reached the edge of our own galaxy. Well, I like the sound of that. Our own galaxy. Well, there are millions of them that we know of. So I don't think anybody would mind if we kept one to ourselves, do you? Mm. Pretty hard to believe, though, isn't it? Mankind has all this to himself. <gasps> that he's the sole inhabitant of all that space called infinity. We're not alone. What's this? Japanese clay figurines. They're 5,000 years old. Jesus, they look like today's astronauts. Right. Here, look at this. These two lines correspond to the most frequent UFO routes. They've been keeping track of them since 1954. See, this one crosses North America and comes down over Europe along this mountain range. Right over the Mangrado. Exactly. What if this is all just coincidence? I suppose it could be, but look at it this way. Both lines cross only areas of strategic importance. Neither of them bother with the third world or even with developing countries. Hmm. How did somebody so pretty get to be so smart? Coincidence. serious accusation, Colonel. It's the truth. Colonel, the General asked for this meeting to hear your opinions, not your complaints. That is my opinion. Nobody wants to get to the bottom of this. What if there's another crash in the same area, a commercial airliner with hundreds of people on board? What then? Pretend it didn't happen? You're over the line, Alex. Drop it. And maybe I should uh, go to the news media with this. But tell them what? Tell them that there's something out there that's a hazard to all air traffic, and you don't want to know what it is. That's blackmail. No, sir, it's a statement of fact. Jim. Colonel, what would you do if it were up to you? Two things. First, close the area to all air traffic. Second, I'd like to go up there, sir, and have a look around. You realize, of course, the danger involved in such a mission. Just give me three tornadoes in support. This is our objective. We'll fly a low approach, 3,000 feet. I'll play decoy and come from the west. Marco, you'll come from the east. Robert, you guys from the north. Franco, you'll come from the southwest. Now, once we reach the restricted area, right on the deck, Marco, up these ravines. Franco, follow the riverbed over the dam. <laughs> Piece of cake, right? I hope you think it's that funny when you get there. Sorry, sir. Robert, I'm afraid you guys got the tricky one. 
under the pipeline. It's important, under the pipeline. Now, once you break into the open, you'll have 58 seconds to rendezvous. I'll already be there, waiting. 58 seconds, no more, no less. Now, we don't know what we'll find when we get there. Hell, uh, we don't even know what we're looking for. So keep your eyes open, huh? Mission code name is Blue Wings. I'm scared. Well, that's a natural emotion, considering. Considering? After all, you're an earthling. <laughs> it's just that I know there's something up there, and uh, I'm not sure I'm ready to face it. Sir. This is Professor Florentino from the Astrophysics Space Center. He'll be monitoring your mission. Very good, sir. Good luck, Colonel. Gentlemen. One last thing, no heroes, okay? Remember, we're men before we're military. We're just gonna go up there, have ourselves a little look around, and report. After you, gentlemen. Ferentino's a man of few words, but a good astronomer. Uh, we know all about him.
mounted a video camera on the F-104. Good. That'll be very helpful. Professor? Counter-espionage, huh? This monitor is the onboard video camera, and this is the tracking monitor. Tower, this is blue. Ready for takeoff. This is blue, too. Ready. Blue, three, ready. Blue, four, ready. Blue, clear for takeoff. Wind, 220, 12 knots. Turn up to 50 feet. 
Four miles to the pipeline. Roger. On the left at the end of the gorge, and we'll have it on visual. Roger. Damn it! Looks tougher than I thought! Put us in the deck, bud, but we're gonna take it out. Roger. Look out for a big outcrop on your left. 18 seconds to rendezvous. Got it. Shit! Alex, we're not getting anything. Christ. What the? Professor, what the hell is that? Beats me. Can't you do something? Oh my god! I can't see! I can't see! Pull up now, get us out of here for god's sake! Pull up! Shut up and let me drive! Watch out, blue leader on collision course left! Blue leader! Blue leader! Break! Break! Holy shit! Blue leader! Blue leader, do you copy? Alex, Alex, can you hear me? What's happening? Keep coming, sir. They're all over the place. Yes, Alex, we see them. We got big trouble here, sir. This is Professor Ferentino, Colonel. Listen to me very carefully. We can see the lights, but we need more information. Can you hear me? Describe what's happening. Fox, blue leader. Situation extreme. We got objects, all quadrants, uh, collision course. A request. Damn it! What the fuck are these suckers with? Hang in there, buddy. Grab the stick. Don't be an asshole. Whoa, it's both. I lost control. Pull out all rescue teams. Blue leader, Fox. Blue 
truly the fox. Do you read me? That's affirmative, sir. Bring them down, Colonel. Bring your men back to base. Roger, sir. We will do. Please don't try. The wings just blow later. Terminate mission. Now. Let's get the hell out of here, guys. You copy? I can't get away from them! The fuckers want to kill us! Now you bastard! Hold your fire! Hold your goddamn fire! What the fuck are you doing? You're heading straight at the mountain! Fuck it! Alex, go ahead! Stop. They're not attacking anymore. It's unbelievable, sir. I'm sorry. Absolutely unbelievable, then. They're all over the place, but they're just... They're just hovering. You read me, sir? Yes, Blue Leader, I read you. Sir. Alex! Go ahead, I read you! It looks like... Jesus, I think that... Can't believe what, Alex? I, I think they're... Can't believe what? Uh, put me through the department. I think they're trying to communicate. Can you tell me what's happening, Blue Leader? I don't know, sir. I just... I have this feeling, a sensation. Try and be a bit more specific, Alex. Fox the Blue Leaders, they're leaving. They're leaving. They disappeared. Did you read me, sir? Loud and clear, Alex. I read you five. Let's step outside. Fox is blue leader returning to base.
Congratulations, Colonel. Well done. Thank you, sir. It was the most incredible sensation. I, I, they came at me. They, they looked as if they were, they were trying to communicate. I'm absolutely sure. Uh, Colonel, this is Mr. Greco of Counter Espionage. Colonel, we, we quite understand your excitement here today. But in fact, nothing really very extraordinary happened up there. Isn't that right, Professor Ferentino? Judging by what we saw and the information we received from you, we believe what you saw were electronically charged gas molecules. Ball lightning. Ball lightning? That's right, an electromagnetic phenomenon. It's rare, but in certain circumstances like today, it produces those luminous effects that you see. You may have seen ball lightning. I didn't. Alex. What I saw were objects, flying objects that, had, that, that moved as if they had a will and an intelligence. And I believe they were trying to communicate with me. You need a rest, Colonel. You've been under a lot of strain. Things look much clearer to you in the morning. Yeah, things look pretty clear to me right now. Professor Ferentino is a respected scientist. He knows what he's talking about. I see. Come on, let's get out of here. Alex, what happened? They deny it. Doesn't matter what happened up there, they don't want to hear about it. Electromagnetic phenomenon. What a waste. Well, you can't stop now. I can't, huh? But what am I supposed to do? Because I'm, I'm uh, you know, fresh out of ideas. I'm not. Come on. Is it possible to instigate an encounter? In several cases, the subjects of a close encounter have never been the same. It is, after all, an experience that goes beyond. Just tell me how. Return to the area of the recurring sightings. You must empty your mind of everything of passion, all emotion. You must have no fear, no anxiety. Professor, what altitude should I approach? No, no, no airplanes, no machines, on foot. Remember, total acceptance. You must climb the mountain. How will I know when I'm in their presence? Angel hair. A UFO almost always leaves this curious fibrous filament behind on rocks, on, on trees, on shrubs. Now, this will be your proof that you are in their presence. I'm sorry, Professor. We need you in the lab. Oh, I'll return in just a moment. I'm coming with you. Isabella. Alex, I'm coming with no. you. No, no. I have to climb this mountain. No, it's, it's too risky. Why? Because I'm a woman, right? God, I don't believe it. Before you met me, you knew nothing about UFOs. What they were or where they came from. Nothing, absolutely nothing. I love you when you get angry. I can't believe you said that. That's the biggest insult to any woman with half a brain. Oh, damn you, Alex. I love you when you talk dirty. I love you. That's my problem. Oh, Alex. <sighs> I have no choice, Isabella. Philip was my best friend. It's his father, their mountain. I have to do this by myself. Impressive, isn't it? 
Ready to move on? You're not tired? Mm, a little. The secret is not to climb with your feet, but with your head. Got to get to the top before dark. That's what you're looking for. <sighs> I'm afraid you'll have to go on alone. Will you be all right? Oh, don't worry about me. This won't be the first night I've spent in the mountains. I'll be fine. Hey, go on now. It's getting late. I'll be back. Sure enough.
Philip. Alex, you made it too. Yes, I made it too. We made it. We made it. Ah. Come on, kid. Let's go home. What? I thought... It's nothing.